Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is the first video in a multi-part series teaching you how to program the Vets Like You Robot. Obviously, for this tutorial you will need a Vets Like You Robot, some type of desktop or laptop PC, or a Mac, and a USB and a USB cable where one end of the cable will be micro USB and the other side will be USB A. So the software we are going to be using to program this robot today is called Robot Mesh Studio. To download it, it's very simple, just go to any web browser, type in Robot Mesh Studio, or Robot Mesh Studio download. Go to their website right here. And then you just download the setup file for your specific desktop. It'll just be the latest one. And then now, okay, so once you have installed the software, you go, you open it up. So for me, I'll just go to the taskbar and type in Robot Mesh Studio Desktop. Let's open it up. So this is what you should be greeted with first. Most likely, you won't have all these programs here on the site. These things here in the middle are example programs. We won't be taking a look at those today. Today, I will take you through the steps in creating your very first program for the Vets Like You Robot. This tutorial will be split into two parts. The first part will be teaching you how to program it in drag and drop in a drag and drop language called Blockly. And the second half, I'll be doing the exact same thing, but this time in Python. So, you're going to create a new local project. Choose the Vets Like You Robot. Choose the language, so I'm going to use Blockly for this half of the video. That's the simpler option. Then I'm just going to create a new. I'm just going to name it. And go to create. And now you are greeted with this. Now at this point in time, feel free to connect your robot to the computer and turn it on. I shall do so now. Okay, now that the robot is on, we will go over to this right hand side and click the detect sensor button. And right here now, all the sensors and motors that you have connected to your robot should show up right here. The robot I am programming today is the autopilot robot that comes with the instructions in the Vets IQ Super Kit. This tutorial can work for any other Vex IQ build as long as it has the same motors or sensors. So you don't need so you don't need this exact build to follow along with this tutorial. First thing we're gonna do in this video is get the robot to move. So first thing I'm gonna do to make it a lot simpler is to configure the drive train. So I'll go right here and configure drive train. And I will go and press enable. I will give the drive train and I will give the drive train a name. Alright, I'm going to the left motor, which will be motor what I want to say. Left motor would be motor number one. The right motor would be motor number six. Now make sure that you take reverse polarity on the right motor, whichever port that is in, and click OK. Now we will go to the right. Now we will go to the left hand side, underneath this drivetrain tab right here, and you are meeting with a whole bunch of blocks. We are going to focus on mainly the red ones and some of the. What do you call this color? Mustard yellow colored ones today. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the drive forward. So we just drag it and drop it underneath the start. Just here a little click. And so all this code is doing is telling the robot to drive forward. Use a 100% of the motor power, so full speed. And drive and very forward for 2,000 millimeters. I'm going to change this to 200 for demonstration purposes. 
And now when you go to run the program, you have two options. You can either just click run right here, or you can download the program to the robot and then run it on the robot by clicking the little check. So today I'm just going to click run. And now we're going to run the code and see what happens. So see, so just like that, you have made the robot move forward 200 millimeters. I'm going to, I'm going to put this back a little bit, change the distance to around 500. Here we go. And just like that, the robot has moved 500 millimeters forward. And just like that, you have successfully written your first program for the Vets IQ robot. The next thing we're going to make the robot do is turn. So this is using a tank turn system, since we have two motors, one for each side. So the way how this works is one, mo one motor will spin clockwise, the other motor will spin counterclockwise, and that will cause it to turn. So we're going to make it turn left. It's going to scale down the power so that we don't wear out the motors too much. I just say turn left at a 90 degree angle. So, let's go run this program now. I'm going to just decrease this a little bit now to 300. We are now going to click run. And as you just saw, it drove forward 300 millimeters, and then it turned left. Now, we can also make it turn right. Just go to the drop down menu, and change the, and change it from left to right. So now, if we run the program again, I should go forward and turn right. Now, one thing to note is you have to be careful with this cable. Make sure that it doesn't get tangled up in all the motor gears. Yeah, it's something to look out for. Now let's take a look at this, um, at these mustard blocks. So we're just going to delete these blocks by dragging them into the garbage can. And now we're going to take a look at this block. So this block will, will make your robot turn in, drive forward or backwards infinitely until you tell it to stop so what you can do to control it so say that you want the robot to move forward for three seconds then you would use this code block to for to begin the code then you will go under robot mesh and use this block that says sleep for three seconds and then we will go back to drive train and then say and then you just block drive train dot break over here. And then just pretty optional drive train dot off. So all we have just done is we have told the robot to drive forward, sleep or wait for three seconds, then stop the drive train, then turn off the drive train. So if we run the code really quickly right here. for three seconds and then it will stop now my table isn't long enough so I will see if I can get it on the floor since the program has already been downloaded onto the best of your robot we can now run the code without having to keep the robot plugged in just gonna undo that we're gonna run the code Drive forward for three seconds and then it will stop. Then, what we can do is we can make it reverse for three seconds or four. So, we use the same block again. Sorry, no, not this one. We use begin driving forward. Because in between here, sorry, this is after, so we just drive this over. Then we do backwards, reverse. Then we can copy this file, sorry, we can copy this code, block, drag it here, and do the same for all the other ones. Yeah. 
And now we plug back in the robot. Now this is where the download function will come in pretty handy. So we just plug back in the robot really quickly. And then we do this drop down arrow here and go to download. So now this will download the program onto the robot. As you can see, the download is now done. So now we can unplug the robot and watch it dry. And so now we're gonna click run. As you can see, it will drive forward for three seconds, stop, and then reverse for three seconds. One, one more time. It's gonna drive forward for three seconds. And then immediately reverse for three seconds. There we go. And just like that, you have written your first Best IQ program in Blockly. And now you know how to make your robot move forward, backwards, left, and now let's take a look at the Python side of things, for those of you who know what that is. Let's go to this Generated Core tab over here. Now the good thing about this program, Robot Mesh Studio, is that it takes your Blockly code and translates it into line by line code, I put into that sort of thing. So you will just copy, mainly this thing underneath the main thread. Copy. We're going to go back home to, to Robot Mesh Studio. We're going to create a new file. That's like you. This one we're going to do is Python. And then we're going to name it Motor Test. Or whatever you want to name it, doesn't really matter. Create. I know all of the sensors and stuff that are connected to the robot will now show up here. The first thing we're going to talk about are variables, which are very common in programming. So what you see here is a variable. This will make it a lot easier when you are programming. So a variable is basically a storage container that holds information, like a, like a string, so like, so like a set of words or a set of text. So what this variable does is it holds the value that's a Q motor, that's a Q dot motor, open brackets, one, close brackets. Now what this is saying is it's using the that's a Q dot motor function. So it's saying that motor one will be, the name motor one will be assigned to a that's a Q motor in slot one. So this one in brackets represents the slot of the port. As you can see right here, so it says port. And then for motors, you can use the switch polarity, which if you want to switch the polarity of the motor, you would choose true. Hey, uh, I forgot to mention something very important when I was recording the video. I forgot to explain what reverse polarity means, so we'll do that now. When you, the reverse polarity is telling the motor to do the opposite of your instructions. The reason why it does this is that on this specific device IQ robot that I'm building, on the right hand side the motor is facing one way, and on the left hand side the motor is facing the opposite way or the motor is flipped. So on the right hand side, for the if you want the wheel to turn a particular way to go forward, the motor will turn clockwise. But if you tell the motor on the left hand side to, to, to turn clockwise, the wheels will go backwards because that motor is flipped. So basically what reverse polarity is doing is it's telling the motor to do the opposite of your instructions. So if you tell so that it will be in sync with the right motor. So if you tell both motors to be to turn clockwise, since one of the motors has reverse polarity enabled, specifically the left one, then now the left motor will turn counterclockwise, but it'll all balance out. For that. Same thing goes for the distance sensor. So it's called distance underscore two because it's a distance sensor and it is in port two. So it's saying that this distance sensor will be a VETS IQ distance sensor in slot two at the unit and it will be measured in centimeters. So the unit it will use is centimeters. 
So you can see here, you can change it to millimeters, inches, or inches. So now let's go into the actual code, now that you understand what these are. Let's paste this in, and so let's take a look at this. So, again we have, okay, now we have to configure a drivetrain again here, because it's a new project. So we do drivetrain, enable, name it drivetrain, left motor is port number one, right motor is port number six. Now they might see this here or they might not. But watch what happens right here in motor 6, the variable motor 6. We choose it. It says true. And then no hashtag reverse polarity. So this hashtag is a comment that makes it easier to understand your code. So you can make comments on a specific line of code for someone else who is taking a look at it. So this true section of the this true parameter that's in the bracket is saying that the switch polarity equals true. So by default, it is by fault. It is false, which means it's telling the robot do not switch the polarity of the motor. But once you add this true keyword, then it will know. Okay, now I have to switch the polarity of this motor. Now let's take a look at the actual code itself. So right here we have drivetrain dot drive. So this is a drivetrain variable right here. Drivetrain motor six. So motor one, motor six, and then the wheel sizes. Drive forward at 100 power. So drive forward at 100% power. Hit your full steam. Now as you can see here, they have power negative zero. Sorry, negative 100.0 dot dot dot. 100% power. So this is telling you the varying degree of how much power you want to give to the motor. And if you go into negatives, that would be the same as reversing the actual motor. Now if you want to stop and take a break in the program, if you want the program to do something for a specific amount of time, that would be called, in Python, that's called sleeping. So you use SYS which is short for system. So it will the system time or the inner clock of the robot and it will tell it to sleep for exactly three seconds. And then we tell the drivetrain to break. And then we tell the drivetrain to turn off. Simple as that. So as you can see here, we want it to go in reverse. We use, we use drivetrain dot drive. And we have the negative numbers right here. So we have negative 100% which means to go backwards full steam telling the system to do that for 3 seconds to do the action that came before it for 3 seconds to the drivetrain to stop or break and then it tells the drivetrain to turn off and now that if you have followed along you will now understand python code the basis of python code for the best like robot and you would have written your first program for the Betsaki robot, which will tell it to move forward, stop, and then reverse. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to leave a like. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get to them as soon as I can. Thank you for watching, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.